Two more days and we claim our independence once again. We celebrate our independence from the British. July 4th, Independence Day. Wow, it's July 2nd already, man. It's still, it's still hot as hell in New York, man. There's nothing you can do about it. So where am I Trump hat? Because Trump wins not only the day, but wins the week for that move in North Korea. I talked about it the other day. Well, you know, now I want to watch the video with you guys, and you, know, okay, and you see what what you think. Anything, anything that de-escalates nuclear war, that 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 de that brings down the possibility of a nuclear, you know, egomaniac throwing nuclear bombs at each other, is a winning proposition. So, uh, so we'll talk about. Um, I want to talk about Anderson Cooper's uh, fortune. Uh, I want to talk about Bill Benny. Uh, there may have been a blunder. We may have made a, uh, a tactical error in some of the information that Bill Benny has provided. Not the information, but the way he framed it. I, I've seen a, uh, I see a quirk in it, and thank you. I'm, uh, I'll get to it in a second. And um, I'll talk a little bit about climate change. I'm going to be on a show at 10 a.m., man. 10 a.m., the natural progressive. Ooh, it's so natural. The natural progressive at 10 a.m. is uh, I'm going to go live over there with um, with those fine people. I think they're in, I'm not really sure where they are. I think they're in Utah, Colorado. And we're going to talk about some climate change issues and things that, you know, hey, man, I, I talk about this shit here and you guys, you guys shit on me. So I'm going to go over there and talk about it. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, so let's, uh, just a couple of memes for us. Let's get some memes. This, is, this shit is funny right here, man. Okay. <laughs> So in, in 2012, Obama looks into North Korea with binoculars from a bulletproof bunker. <laughs> and in 2019, Trump walks in with the chairman right next to him, man. Fucking, that is some shit right there. It's a great, it's a great meme right there. Coward. Who's the, who's the leader? Who is the leader? Who's your daddy? Here's a good one. Um, here's Bernie standing in between... The racist, the racist, the race card player Camilla Harris calling Joe Biden a segregist, and and Biden calling her a cop, and Bernie's in the middle. Man, I, you know what, man? I was I was there for for all of you guys. I'm you know, so I'm the pick right there, man. That's Bernie Sanders um, being dragged away by the police uh, back in the civil rights in his uh, civil rights days. It was a great great meme. So. Um, my friend, I you remember the, this uh, meme I put out. It was a thumbnail, and I it, it, uh, discussing the second night of the Democratic uh, debates. And I saw, I for some reason, I thought of a bowling alley, and I thought of bowling pins going flying. Ten bowling pins on the stage, right? And but I didn't know who the who the bowling ball was, right? And I said, oh, the bowling ball, because I think Bernie Sanders kind of. You know, the, Camilla Harris is taking out Biden. All the the you know four or five shit sandwiches are starting to fall off a little bit. So I, I gave I gave the the um, the bowling ball to Bernie, but my friend um, uh, Chris Sullivan right had a different view. <laughs> so it was a great meme. Thank you, Chris. Man, Chris sent the shit to me. Right? So it's uh, it's the Democrats. It's Trump is the bowling ball. Is Trump the bowling ball? I don't know, man. He's going to knock down the leftists, right? My, my man, my man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, my man, my man, Chris. So let's watch, let's watch Trump have his moment, man. This is wonderful. Wonderful shit. He's still not there. Watch him step over there. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Enter North Korea. Right? Oh, come on. That's how you, that's how you, what's your own camp? Why do you need six different angles? Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> president Trump has just walked across the demarcation line that made him the first U.S. president to visit our country. I just want to say that uh, this is my honor. I didn't really expect it. We were in Japan for the G20. We came over and I said, hey, I'm over here. I want to call up Chairman Kim. And we got to meet and uh, stepping across that line was a great honor. A lot of progress has been made. A lot of friendships have been made. And this is... Kim, Kim also said, uh, one of the translations, he says, I wasn't expecting to meet you here. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So let's, uh, that's just a good piece to watch, man. It's historical, right? 
So Gloria Vanderbilt, right? It was Gloria Vanderbilt. You didn't know that, but you didn't, a lot of people didn't know that Gloria Vanderbilt left almost everything to Anderson Cooper. Why? Because it's his mother. That was Mama. There, she was, um, so Anderson Cooper got the whole fucking lot, man. How much money did he make? Two, it looks like $200 million. So Gloria Vanderbilt, this is interesting too because there's a, some kind of dispute between Anderson Cooper and his other brother, Chris Stokes. Gloria Vanderbilt left almost all of her estate to her youngest son, Anderson Cooper, and nothing, wow, nothing to her estranged middle son, Chris Stokowski, excuse me, Stokowski, according to her will. The document filed Monday in Manhattan Surrogate Court says the recently deceased socialist fashion icon, uh, uh, icon's eldest son, Lep- Lepardo, <laughs> Lepold, Lepold <clears throat> will get her midtown pad in the co- co-op at 30 Berkman uh, Place. That's a couple of million dollars. He didn't do so bad. <clears throat> but all the rest of her property goes to CNN host, Anderson Cooper. Um, so Vanderbilt is the great, great, great granddaughter of railroad tycoon Cornelius Vanderbilt. And, uh, she died last two weeks ago, June 17th at 95 years old, diagnosed with stomach cancer. Uh, in a 2014, uh, in 2014, Anderson Cooper told Howard Stern in a radio interview that he didn't expect to inherit his mother's fortune. But, which was estimated at $200 million. So do we feel sorry for Anderson Cooper? Poor Anderson Cooper. Poor Anderson Cooper. Right? So it just, you know, he's just, a, he, he was oligarchy and now he is oligarchy. He is the power elite with his $200 million. Let's see if he quits or stays with it. So another story, right? Uh, I think Bill Benny may have gotten something wrong. So I put this uh, this LARPer video up, right? Talking about the ridiculousness of the LARPers. And, and my friend, our friend, Mike uh, Fletcher, Mike Fletcher, thank you very much, put this up, right? And uh, it's a fine, fine, right? So Bill Benny has always told us, right? Remember this this line? Bill Benny, NSA, has has 32 pages of communications between Seth Rich and Julian Assange. Now, a lot of us lean on Bill Benny, and I'd like to see Bill Benny clarify this, if he even said it or not. But according to, um, according to Bill Benny, if Benny is interpreting this correctly, and bear in mind that not only he is extraordinarily bright, he is sometimes referred to as the father of the NSA. Right? He says, Ty, Ty Clever was the guy who, who did the uh, FOIA information uh, re- uh, request from the NSA asking for any data that involved both Seth Rich and also Julian Assange. And they responded by saying, we have 15 files, 32 pages, but they're all classified in accordance with the executive order. Right? So th- that's, not, that's not entirely true, according to a document that I'm going to show you in a second. That says that NSA has records of communications between Seth Rich and Julian Assange. I mean, that's only business. That's only business that NSA is in, copying communications we, between people and devices. Benny himself says that he has two sources inside Intel communi- community vouching for for this. Cy Hirsch claims to have a, a trusted inform. They're all bullshit artists, right? So the point is, I don't even want to talk about those guys. The point is, did did is that. Is that, is that a, uh, a valid uh, thing to say? Did Seth Rich communicate with Julian Assange according to a FOIA report? That cannot be confirmed according to this document, right? And I stand corrected because I was one of the people that said that, that it, 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 could, could be, it could be confirmed, right? Because we were leaning on Bill Benny. Bill Benny led us into the ditch, at least in a little bit. He's still magnificent, but we're, we're going to talk about it. So what did Bill, what exactly did this FOIA request request? So October 10, 2017, a FOIA uh, was requested for the death of uh, Seth Rich, surrounding the death of Seth Rich. Um, But here it is. Number one, the request is for all documents, records, or communications referring, referencing, or containing communications between Seth Rich and, quote, 
any of the following. Any of the following. Not just Seth Rich. Not just Julian Assange. Seth Rich and any of the following. That's a big difference right there. So Julian Assange, uh, WikiLeaks, Kim.com, Aaron Rich, who's his brother, Sean Lucas, who was the the, uh, server who also got whacked in Florida, Kelsey Mulka, that was Sean, uh, that was uh, Seth Rich's girlfriend, Imran Awan, Id Awan, Idid Awan, Ibid, (laughs) fucking Ibid Ababa, I got to put the view around for for the Muslims. Imran Awan, Abri Hakaha, Jamaha, Humaha, Hini Hava, and Rakaha. So, so all these people, right? It's the point is that we fucked up, man. It's, you can't say that there was, um, right? So, you can't say your request has been processed and the provisions of the FIA. 15 documents, 32 pages re- responsive to your request have been reviewed by this agency as required by the FOIA and have been found to be currently and properly classified uh, with, uh, with executive order. Right? And they're top secret and we're not giving them to you. Right? So nobody has seen the documents. But there are there is a presence of 15 documents. And all along we've been saying that is proof that Seth Rich was communicating with Julian Assange. But no, Seth Rich was communicating with any of the following of these guys. So he could have been talking to his brother. There could be 32 pages of him, Bill Benny, of him, of Seth Rich talking to his brother, right? It doesn't mean he could have been talking to to, to his girlfriend, right? Come on, man. What a blunder. What a colossal blunder. I don't, where's your FBI guy, right? Fuck that shit, man. Right? So that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say. If this document is legitimate, FOIA case 102706B, right? So here you go, man. Look into it, right? The, the document is here, National Security Agency. And there's the link to it. Thank you, Mike Fletcher. It's a good find. Uh, so... So in a, in a in what time is it? So in about an hour, I'm going to be on um, I'm going to be on uh, this show, and we're going to talk about some climate change. I'm not going to get into it here, but uh, we're going to be on the natural. I am going. There's no we here. There's no we. I hate when people do that. Oh, we're going to be no. I'm going to be on the fucking and I, this is this is just me in my mother's basement, and I got two lazy cats. Two lazy cats are my my IT guys, right? So and researchers. So I am going to be on The Natural Progressive, and I hope you all will join me. I already put in excellent. I'll be there uh, in an hour, and we're going to talk about some climate change. And I know a lot of people hate this shit, man. You hate it. If Conti, you fucking, you snow blind. Oh, Conti, you bought into the, the conspiracy theory that, that, that man is evil and man is destroying the planet. Man is a virus. I, I know all, the, all that uh, Stuff. So we're going to talk about it because I am a vegan. I am vegetarian, vegan, and uh, the, you know believe in a. I believe science that um, and some of the statistics that uh, the scientists are telling us, based on the latest uh, UN report, that uh, we are we are on a collision course for uh, you know st- you know st- uh, uh, hurting the planet, hurting ourselves in the process. So that's all I'll say about that. I got the guitar out. Maybe they'll let me play. I don't know. It's not my show, man. Fucking, you know what I'm saying, man? It's not my show. I mean, I don't know how to be a guest. I'm just a guy with a microphone, man. I'm flattered. People want to have me on their show. Uh, Okay, all right, I'm there, man. You know what I'm saying? It's fucking good shit, man. Especially if it's not a bunch of jerk-offs trying to to set you up and trying to to defame you. (laughs) Fucking guys, the LARPs are crazy. These LARP guys, are, they're, they're relentless, man. Fucking, oh, you're so, if you would only, LARPers, if you would only put your powers, use your evilness and turn it to the good, right? Like, like remember Dark Vader started out good and then he became evil? Well, why don't you use your powers, your superpowers of, of manipulation and, and you're so aggressive. Why don't you just turn it towards, toward, look to the light, folks. Guys, Look to the light. Look to the light and, 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 and save yourself, LARPers. I'm not, don't call me a LARPer, a live action role play. I'm not a live action role player because that's fiction. I'm just a real guy, like I said, sitting in my mother's basement, you know, 
doing a, doing my YouTube show, right? That's all I am, right? I'm not I'm not so you know I, I have yeah sure I got a, a nice a very interesting resume and I'm very very talented in, in my ability to communicate my thoughts across the the the, the vast internet uh, world. But I'm still just one guy, and you know I'm no I'm no I don't pretend to be anybody. I'm not a, pretending to be a superhero or a guy, you know. Uh, uh, going after, you know, going after the bad guys. I don't pretend to be any of that shit. I'm just, I just want the truth, you know. So that's who I am. That's why I am kindly become a, uh, kindly become a Patreon of this channel. Uh, it's, it's good stuff, man. We're growing, despite what the YouTube numbers say. We're growing. I know it. I could feel it in my bones. We're growing. People want to hear the truth, unequivocally, un, un, unadulterated truth. Marcus Conte reporting. <laughs> 